All junglers at some point or another have wondered how did the enemy jungler control the game so easily? How does the challenger jungler do it every game? And you all know what it's like when you have a high yellow smurf against you. If you're wondering if there's some secret jungle stuff for you to control games, well yes, yes there is, it's this video. We will break down two challenger games that showcases exactly what reads, decisions, pathing, tracking, ganking, denial, and all the jungle fundamentals behind that level of control that you don't really honestly see. So we have two challenger games, and once we have finished this video, you should be able to see the difference between their game gameplay and your gameplay, but the good news is the game you played before this video will be the last one where you don't have control. And that, my friends, is a Vakayu.gg guarantee. The only site dedicated to jungle improvement through video courses for your MMR, free weekly jungle newsletter tips as well as an improvement PDF, and of course the coaching VOD library, guiding you every step of the way as you climb from low elo all the way up to challenger, as everyone in your friends list is left wanting with jealousy. Whether your goal is gold, diamond, or even master plus, the reviews show you that that can be achieved. Any course gain between now and July 1st will be eligible for the next phase of Vakayu.gg for absolute free that will start on that date. And because it's the end of the split, why not a 20% discount until July 1st as well? Vakayu.gg, jungler's learning paradise. So we have a video with a Nico jungle and we have a video with a Lee Sin jungle showcasing a few different playstyles. We will start off with the Lee Sin jungle because the mechanics in this are absolutely ridiculous. Then we'll follow up with the Nico jungle to showcase how it's applied from the blue side and with a different context, and also how it would shut down this Lee Sin jungle as well. So we get both sides of the domination coin. So you would have seen the Rengo's team kill the Annie in the mid lane. You're the Lee Sin, they see you, they know where you are starting. You also know where the Rengo is starting because it's 111 when he disappears going up. He will start blue, you will start raptors. Now the mind games begin already. We've talked about the jungle decision making a lot recently, but because we are pathing in the same direction, it shifts our idea of what we want to accomplish. That one of control is either take away one of the things that the enemy jungler wants to do, or two, do something that makes them feel they are forced to do something later on. In this case, we could go ahead and do red Krug's raptors and gank the bottom lane maybe. We know Rengar's pathing that side, which means that's a little bit more dangerous. So let's take the guaranteed play. And that's the early phase thing, fundamental number one, make the guaranteed play. Raptors, Red Krugs, kill the Cassante. We know the Rengar's gonna be pathing to the bottom side and will not be able to rotate to this without compromising way too much of his game plan. This means we need to go back to base, get animization advantage, and as we saw in a video earlier in the month, and I will leave a link to that below just called the video from earlier in the month, this idea doesn't always work if the blue side jungler makes the right play or wins the 1v1. In this particular case, the Lee Sin decides, look, I need to go to the bottom lane, I know the Rengar's gonna finish his clear, look to gank it, and look to take the Scuttle Crab. Rengar shows and Rengar does exactly what he's meant to do. Full clear, gank the bottom lane, except wait a second, he didn't full clear. He cut out the crook cam. This is the kind of tempo adjustment I am talking about. So you can take the guaranteed play, that's one. And then number two is making sure you can adjust the tempo in your favor. If Ringo stays and finishes the Krugs, it gives the Lee Sin time to go back to base, buy his longsword, and come down to the bottom lane to counter gank me. So why don't I skip the Krugs and then gank the bottom lane before Lee Sin can rotate? Lee Sin now can spend his time doing the wolf camp because there's nothing he can do about that. But the Rengo should know he has itemization deficit against the Lee Sin. They start the 1v1. The Ziggs wants to base. Both the Ziggs and the Senna cancel what they're doing to rotate to help the Rengar, who still gets killed. The Lisa makes a Giga outplay to kill the Senna as well. The Syndra shows up, he hits a Q on her, uses magnificently fluid mechanics to get over the wall, and still unfortunately dies, but holy hell was that cool. That's because it's owner of T1 playing Lee Sin. Now the bottom lane and mid laners keep fisting each other and everything goes a little bit shit sideways, but the thing is, if the Rengar said, hey look, why don't I just go back to base, or why don't I go to the Krugs, then base with my double cash money gold kill and go ahead and take the top scuttle away from Lee Sin. That would be a pretty good play because the Lee Sin would have to do his blue, his gromp, he'll take the bottom scuttle. Yes, he's going to invest time into that side, but you could of course take the double kill you've had and reinvest it into the top side. Now you could counter jungle his Krugs and Raptors as well. So the fight is great and he's lucky his lane is rotated, but the Lee Sin made a really nice lemonade out of that lemon. And of course, because he respawns with his blue and gromp available, he knows the scuttle crab is still up and he sees the fight is extended. The Lee Sim will rotate and try and help his lane and get some cleanup kills. He's not going to focus cams. If you're an aggressive jungler, your Warwick's, Rek'Sai's, and Lee's, you know, your carnivore junglers, then this is the kind of play you want to make. The Rengar is, while a carnivore style jungler, is really an omnivore because he wants to snowball and scale. That video will be linked below as well, just types of junglers if you don't really know what we mean. But the carnivores are usually your aggressive early game junglers and your omnivores are usually your scalers. So he does his wolf, sees what's happening, says I'm going to take that topside scuttle as well. I will take your raptors, and instead of wasting my time taking the Krugs, I will dive the Gragas, which I can kill with the Cassandre. Nicely done, very smooth, 
And so the Rangers one mistake here was taking an unguaranteed play for the Lee Sin. It was a great play because he had the atomization advantage and still got two kills from it. But the Rangers obviously saw the Lee Sin, makes a good proactive play while he's dead. Always the most important thing. It's not just about the camps and takes a little bit of that tempo back. Now the Lee Sin's going to respawn. And so essentially there's no point going to the top side. And here's that third fundamental, the strategic aggressive play. This is important because it's not just for carnivore junglers. It's for any jungler in the game. I know I can abuse vision by shadowing my mid lane pushing in and go and take that Raptor camp. I know the Rengar is going to be sequencing from top to bottom after the dive. Can I snack this and get out before anyone rotates? The answer is a resounding yes. Obviously, the enemy support is allowed to roam at this particular stage. Always pay attention to roam timers, death timers, respawn timers. Now, while the last couple of videos have been building up to this video on total control, if you haven't seen those, the Rengar at this stage will know the Lee Sin has taken his Raptor camp and will detach. He knows now there's only Krug camp on the bottom side and his bottom lane isn't exactly in a good position for him to gank, counter gank or dive. So instead of trying to wrestle tempo with the Lee Sin in a 50-50 fight, just swaps and goes to the top side. The Lee Sin knows that Rengar's most likely going to make that situation because they understand the game. The Lee Sin sees the center, knows that his bottom lane is smacking those turrets away and she will have to go back to the bottom side, and knows that Rengar will either go to the top side and make a counterplay, or try and counter gank him on the bottom side. Either way, I'm stronger as the Lee Sin in this moment, so we will go for the dive. If Rengar shows, we will make the mechanical plays necessary to kill him as well. So the aggressive play from the Lee Sin is saying, okay, Rengar stole my stuff. I'm going to steal his stuff. Now I know because I stole it and he knows that I stole it. He's going to stay on the other side so I can make an aggressive dive for my laners as well. From there, you can fall back to your camps and your dragons. Now Rengar takes a while to show. He invests a lot of time into that top lane gank on Gragas and doesn't get anything. From the Lee Sin's perspective, we don't exactly know if he waited and went back to base. So there's no point forcing a dragon unnecessarily when your bot lane wants to reset. When your bot lane is low, when your bot lane wants to go back to base, you know, involuntarily through death. That dragon take at the wrong moment is what costs a lot of jungles the ability to get to diamond, to get to master, and yes, even to get to gold. The obsessive nature over dragon. But at this stage, it's been a long while since the Rengar has really done anything on the bottom side. So Lisa probably thinks, okay, look, I can either go to the top side, take those camps and take the Herald, or can assume that Rengar is going to try and go for that anyway. And you know what? I don't care because I want to, one, take all the stuff away, make sure my bottom lane maintains their lead, and obviously get that juicy dragon for myself and my homies. Now, the most important thing here is that Rengar says, I need to go to the bottom side. Lee Sin decides, look, straight out of base again. Don't do my camps and then look for action. If I have a tempo advantage, maintain it. The Rengar tried to normalize it, but wasn't able to do so with the top lane gang. So go and gang, make a play if it's makeable. And if you then have to fall back to your camps to reward yourself, do so. And that's the fourth fundamental here. Don't throw away strong tempo control for some camps that you don't need to take and you could take later. In this case, we push the Syndra off. We burn the Flash. We then go and try and take the Raptors. Rengar shows up. Push him out because you just created a prior from mid and you have that 1v1 advantage. Now you can take his Raptors. Take his red. Fall back to the Ocean Dragon. That's kind of the fifth fundamental here, that outside end rule, but we talk about it every video. Take the things that you can take from the outermost point, then fall back. So in this case, it's red, then the dragon. Hey, and then we can fall back to our camps if there's nothing, but we can also go and, you know, kill bot lane again. And this is where Rengar totally lost control of the game because he let the Lee Sin keep that tempo advantage, try to hover bot lane, and basically just had to wait. Wait and wait and wait. What should he have done once he lost his red? Just go top side. Ditch and say, okay, look, I can't contest. I know you're going to kill my bot lane, but I can take your whole red side. I can take the Herald. I can snowball Cassante, which is what he should be doing, normalizing that advantage from the lease inside so that that control is still shared and not one jungler has it over the other. As soon as you understand how to play outward with river control and always reward yourself with camps after the good plays you've made, especially as a more carnivore omnivore style jungler, you're going to notice yourself having a lot bigger leads over enemy junglers. Now, if you're asking, hey, what should I do if I'm a farming jungler in the situation? Well, as you're seeing the Lee Sin kind of play a bit more aggressively, Rengar's team is actually able to get a bit of a reprieve and take the Herald. It's not enough to take away a full control of the Lee Sin. And Ona will, in fact, 1v9 this game and straight up, I'll leave the match history link in the description below. You can see what kind of domination he affected using these four principles. But if you're a farming jungler, a lot of it is the same, but it's also about understanding a bit more your farming temper for high CSPM. For that, we have Nico. Now, while Lee Sin got that CSPM up to 6.3 in their previous game, we have to understand that as a farming jungler, Nico, well, she's not really a farming jungler, but she is a jungler who farms pretty damn quickly, also has a lot of great gank ability. And while here you expect the Lee Sin to start on the top side and go down, he actually went leashless on the blue side and is going up. But from our perspective, then we can just go ahead and affect the lane we want to affect, understand that the twist is most important. I love getting a leash on the red buff, doing Krugs, Raptors, going the long way through the river and just having a great ganging angle of approach unexpected by the bot lane because they leashed. 
Now, once we see that the blue's gone, so we know Lee Sin's going up and doing a full clear, that changes his perspective as well. From our perspective, yeah, we got the successful gank at the bottom lane, but now we can go straight back to base like Lee Sin in the last game to get an itemization spike just to be able to fight and defend our top side, or we can stay out, float up, take the wolf camp, react to action on the map. If there's a trade in the mid lane, people are getting low, stop your clear, dynamically path over. Again, another very important point to understand when it's best to leave your camps and rotate for those 80% plus success rate plays. There's a low victor, there's a low Jace. Why don't I go ahead and save my Jace and, you know, kill the victor. From the farming jungler's perspective, if whoever you are here doesn't really matter, you're doing a full clear up. If you're doing that and you are not able to contest this top skeletal crab, either through numbers, through simple 1v1, you just reset and now try and create some tempo advantage on the bottom side, correct the bottom lane gank by the Nico, and then of course if the Nico stays out, you can do the counter jungling just like the Leeson showed in the last game. But there's nothing saying as a Hecarim you can't do the blue side quadrant and gank the mid lane. And that's the point, even if Nico is technically something that can really do a great full clear, why, when I can get out ahead of the Lee Sin, he's a bit of an unknown fact, and now I've created this tempo advantage for myself. How do I maintain it with the same fundamentals from the previous game? Firstly, please ensure you don't die in these fights, which the Nico does a good job of doing. Finish up your blue side quadrant, go back to base and spend. The Lee Sin makes a nice gank in the mid lane, knowing the Nico's gonna have to reset, but instead of going for the Raptors because he could not, he falls back. So as a farming jungler here from the Nico's perspective, anyone's perspective, you control your own house. Take the Raptors, take the Krugs. Why? Because we know the Lee Sin ganked the mid lane, we'll go back to his blue side and maybe look to do something on the bottom lane. If he doesn't and he just simply passes to the top side, we get a free dragon. Did you notice how that was the read, but when it didn't happen, we reacted to the contingency plan? Always know what you want to do when the expected doesn't occur. And if the enemy jungler isn't interested in regaining tempo control, playing aggressively, or doing anything we're talking about in this video, he can farm it up and just lose. Now, unfortunately, here what we do is we rotate and die. What does this mean for your ability to control the enemy jungler? It's not good, because now you're gray screen, he's also gray screen, but he's gonna respawn and be on the map at the same time as you. You both have about the same CS, he has one less KP, sure you have an objective, but it's neutralized the control between us. So how would you regain that control then, huh? Would you go down to the red buff if you're low elo? Please don't do that. We've got Wolves, we've got Grump, we've got Scudder, we've got Herald, and the Lee Sin also knows he's gonna need to get some of that to make sure he offsets the objective advantage you have. Lee Sin also knows this, so ganks the top lane to grab himself a kill in the Croc, which means without numbers advantage, they could take over the Herald control matrix. Or at this particular stage, because he didn't do what I said in the first game, which is track, support, roam timers, Nika will be able to extrapolate where Lee Sin is going, move into his jungle with the aggressive play, just like in the last game, make that kill. Once you make that kill or you push them out, you can fall back to the objective. You can then fall back to your blue side camps. And for those wondering about that extrapolation, was it difficult? How did you know? Well, the red buff is spawning, a global timer. We see the Lee Sin gang top lane, he's gonna go to his red, and then he's gonna look to leverage that into a herald. Why don't we just, you know, invade and kill him, take all of those things, and now the Lee Sin is feeling desperate, like the Rengar did in the last game. I guess I have to force something or wait for you to show up. We now, as the Nico, have control. Again, he gets desperate, chasing you, kill him, you take his red. He's gonna go to the bottom side here because he knows he needs some free time to catch up with farm. He's gonna try and set up for the dragon. So as Nico, do you go to the bottom side now? No. First, he has to take care of his camps because I'm in control as the Nico. So I can take my top side camps, pass down for the dragon fight, and we can do whatever we need to do and then fall back to our red side. They will be safe, those camps. Leeson cannot afford to do those before the dragon. Too risky. And if you have a bit of an unknown factor, hey, look, I'm taking my blue side, I wanna go do the dragon. What's the best thing you can do before an objective when the enemy jungler knows they need this to get back in the game? Make the pick. If someone's out of position and everyone's just kind of handshaking and waiting for the fight when the dragon spawns, don't allow this. I made a Twitter thread about this a few weeks ago talking about objective setup. If someone steps out or if someone isn't ready, just make the pick. You can say, well, look at what Nico can do. No other job. I mean, if you're Rengar, you can do this. Yes, you can just ult and kill. If you're Evelyn, they'll have no idea you're there. You could Twitch jungle and make this pick. And then, of course, you can fall on down, take the turret, and now you have total control for the dragons and more fightings. The experience advantage is in your favor. The CS advantage is in your favor. Look at that. And you can see, Nico isn't quite a farming jungler and it didn't feel like she was farming a lot, but she really was. Strategic, aggressive counter jungling. Using the tempo control to do more things to keep that control. Enemy jungler didn't quite make the right moves to offset it, and thus, Nico took over. So hopefully you can see by using quadrant clearing, a few extended sequences here and there, and I'll throw those definitions up on the screen right now. And applying those fundamentals, you can truly maintain control over enemy junglers. And it doesn't matter if you're a ganking jungler or a farming jungler. The right time to move into the enemy jungle to push them off to counter jungle is the same for everybody. If your camps are more important to you as a farming and scaling jungler than say an early game jungler, then you can always fall back to them 
and just sequence and do them in the right order. Hey look, dragon's on the bottom side, he can't take my bottom side cams, might as well do my top side cams. Hopefully this adds a little aggro to your tempo and your jungle pathing, but if you are interested in more of these techniques, the advanced jungle pathing and tempo control that underpin everything, the video on the box in your top right, that explains it all.